notes from which uh, from which uh, I have uh, heavily borrowed. I uh, I must say uh, contents of this presentation. Also, our winner panelist, Dr. Anna Rogers, for her insightful blogs and notes in in NLP, and uh, Dr. Uh, Devi Parik uh, from Facebook AI for her blog on um, on how to uh, respond to rebuttals. So, uh, so the content of the presentation uh, are uh, very much inspired from their thoughts, uh, presentations, and notes. So, um, yeah, uh, peer review. Uh, we are we are all researchers, and we are all accustomed to this system. And sometimes, it is uh, referred to as the holy grail of research validation or the cornerstone of scientific publishing, but uh, it's, it's, it's debatable. And yeah, there are, uh, there, are, uh, there, uh, uh, there are many questions around this system, but probably it is the best what we have uh, to validate our research. So um, as we all know that uh, peer review involves like subjecting the author's work to, the, to uh, examination by uh, experts or peers from the same field. And finally to evaluate that uh, whether it would be suitable for uh, publication. And also it helps the publisher to decide that whether the publisher would want to go ahead uh, on publishing that research in their respective uh, venues, whether it be the con conference or a journal. So why is peer review important? Uh, peer review is important as because like it is probably a very perfect example of how uh, community effort is sharing research. Is, is uh, rather shaping research. Um, people from different backgrounds coming together to evaluate one's work and then uh, helping the community to validate the work and uh, finally uh, disseminate the work. So it is also a mandatory check by our uh, peers to prevent uh, our, our community or the research fraternity to be flooded with ill reportings. And sometimes we refer uh, peer review as the guardian of uh, uh, knowledge and, and, and scientific wisdom. Also, one goal of the peer review is to, uh, is to improvise our manuscripts before they are, uh, before they are published. And uh, probably it is also uh, helps uh, one to stay abreast with the latest research when it, when it is just straight out of the researcher's lab. So, uh, but uh, as I said, that uh, probably it is debatable that whether it is the best system that we have, but probably uh, it is the most popular system that we have. And we all know that how the conventional peer review system works. But uh, do we have an alternate to the, to, the, to the conventional peer review system? Yes, we have. Uh, for example, uh, there are uh, pre-publication servers like Ar uh, Archive or BioArchive. Uh, several uh, journals have experimented with different kinds of peer reviews, like uh, re-reviews and opting out so that one, uh, one author uh, may opt out after receiving a major decision and then only ask the editors uh, to review their papers. So probably it was introduced in DMJ. And uh, then cascading peer reviews, uh, where uh, which is quite common where um, the, the peer reviews are, um, are reviewed in several stages. Portable peer reviews where um, sometimes the reviews are forwarded uh, to other journals if the, uh, if, the uh, if the particular paper or uh, if the particular uh, paper is not accepted on a, uh, on a given journal, but the, uh, the, the publishing house may think of forwarding those reviews uh, to other journals in their uh, in their umbrella. So uh, there are also venues where uh, crowdsourcing peer peer reviews work with immediate publication and invited reviews, uh, and 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 definitely open peer reviews, which is coming up so strongly in the NLP community and also uh, probably uh, also adapted in some other communities uh, where uh, people um, openly write their reviews and based on that. Uh, the uh, the uh, the originally uh, officially appointed reviewers uh, write their reviews and finally the chairs uh, take decision. So uh, th there has been lots of experiments uh, um, uh, to find out a suitable alternative uh, to the conventional peer review system. But uh, as we know, uh, the conventional peer review system is probably uh, the most popular and the best what uh, we have. Uh, 
so uh, at the same time uh, we as uh, researchers are also uh, interested with the task of uh, writing uh, writing peer review so why do we why do we write and what what should be our motivation to write one so it would be probably a duty to the community because the community is also helping us to evaluate our research to uh, find loopholes or give constructive feedbacks also uh, peer reviews uh, would help one researcher to understand the relevant literature better because once you don't uh, if if you want to re review a certain work you need to be abreast with the uh, recent works or prior works uh, or the prior art in that domain peer reviews can also help to, to trigger new ideas from the latest findings which may not be uh, in, a, in a published form because uh, as far as the uh, timelines of journal peer review goes it usually takes some time before a research is published but uh, peer reviewers has this advantage to uh, get uh, to, to get to know about the uh, latest research uh, that came from the researchers and that that might trigger some new ideas new findings new perspectives new collaborations also it is our duty to shape the community knowledge so that uh, we don't have um, we don't have ill reportings or ill findings uh, in our in our knowledge repository and although although there are instances and which is uh, quite uh, predominant with predatory journals uh, and publishers coming into the play and uh, and uh, using this space but it is also a duty to help shape uh, the 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 community knowledge with good with good research good science and probably prohibit uh, bad science at the same time uh, uh, our duty is also to write a constructive feedback uh, to the researchers on their work so that uh, they can have uh, very clear action points of, on what to do next whether uh, whether uh, the uh, peer reviewer is recommending uh, acceptance or, or or rejection so yes uh, there are many challenges in the peer review system uh, as because this is a system which dates back to the 16th century and still we are probably continuing uh, the same tradition that uh, used to be uh, 100 years back uh, but with uh, probably little improvisations a whole lot of innovation has happened to the to scholarly publishing uh, since the uh, world wide web came world wide web came but probably little change changes uh, are there in the conventional peer review system so it really calls for uh, the different experiments that are currently going on uh, on various peer review initiatives to uh, shape the future of scholarly communication so uh, I want to highlight some shortcomings uh, that uh, usually researchers compl uh, complain about. Uh, first is ar ar arbitrariness, like um, the the reviews are sometimes very arbitrary. They are uh, they are not uh, written very thoroughly, or uh, that they are not posed in a very argumentative uh, manner. Sometimes we uh, um, complain about the timeliness because. Uh, the reviewers fail to respond in certain time and then the publication or the decision of the papers get uh, delayed uh, also thoroughness uh, uh, sometimes we receive reviews which are not thorough which are uh, which are not detailed and uh, which are probably made so made, made in a very superficial manner which uh, probably we should uh, avoid and all these uh, factors accumulates to the uh, quality of the peer review, which we probably uh, complain about uh, mostly when we receive rejections. But uh, again, uh, the, the, the same is true for uh, recommendations for accepted paper uh, for accepted reviews. Uh, sometimes we call we there uh, we complain about biasness in the review, and there are lots of sources of bias, which probably I won't I would skip in this. Uh, presentation but uh, we all know that uh, probably one source of bias which we uh, usually identify in this part of the world of uh, not being a native english speaker also finding uh, qualified uh, reviewers in the community is a is an is a very important challenge because uh, peer review is a job is a very critical job for the future of uh, science for the future of research for the future of scholarly communication but it is voluntary uh, so uh, researchers has to uh, make out a separate time uh, 
uh, to read the papers and give their thoughtful, constructive reviews, uh, apart, uh, aside from their uh, daily uh, workload. So, uh, so finding qualified reviewers and also find, uh, once you've identified qualified reviewers, finding their time is a super critical but uh, important job to do for the chairs or the editors. And um, since uh, the scholarly publication sector, sector has exploded uh, after the advent of the web and uh, and the and and also uh, newer venues are coming up uh, and uh, research and and the research fraternity is also expanding. So there's a huge amount of information overload of uh, papers uh, on the on the reviewing system. And uh, as we say that we need good reviewers. Uh, we need uh, qualified expert reviewers, but sometimes it's because of the information overload, uh, the chairs or the editors are uh, forced to delegate this uh, critical uh, responsibility to probably early career or students or uh, novice researchers, and which obviously uh, to some extent degrades the quality uh, of the reviews that the authors receive. So uh, yes, the list can go on and I can uh, go on ranting about the shortcomings. Uh, so yeah. So what would, uh, what would uh, make a good uh, peer review, uh, if we say? Uh, so there are many characteristics, but uh, I have summarized uh, some, uh, some which are mostly, uh, which are mostly uh, discussed. Uh, probably the first one being the review should be constructive and, uh, the, and it should be written in a very helpful tone. Uh, the, uh, the review should be supportive uh, of, you know, towards the author, but it should be also fair. Uh, the authors can make out the action points clearly from the reviews to act upon next. As a reviewer uh, of, of a paper, when we, uh, when we ask uh, authors to write uh, in, uh, in consistent uh, language and grammar, so we should also be, uh, as, as a reviewer, be grammatically consistent consistent. Whenever uh, we would pose a comment uh, to the author, uh, uh, probably uh, if, if we pose a critic to the author, uh, it's usually we call them as arguments. And uh, if you are posing an argument, our argument should be uh, backed by proper evidence, uh, probably uh, quoting something from the paper itself. Um, the review should uh, appear thoughtful, uh, and not superficial, uh, and um, uh, the 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 author should get the feeling that uh, the reviewer has done a good job of reading his or her work, and then uh, provided a detailed and thoughtful review, uh, so that he feels that uh, his or her work was in good hands uh, when it was being evaluated or examined. A good review should also be fit forward, which actually points out, uh, which actually is. Uh, gives, uh, which actually says that um, a good review should give feedbacks and action points uh, to the authors to work upon. And definitely we should be timely enough. Uh, we should maintain the timeline as uh, in journal peer reviews or in conference peer reviews so that the peer, the peer review uh, process gets, uh, for, for, for a particular, uh, particular art, uh, article gives, gets its, its uh, due time. We also would, we would also want to structure the peer review and not probably make it messy so that it is easier to comprehend. And uh, also while, while, explaining, uh, while explaining or giving our comment, we should be uh, very precise, uh, precise and probably the best way could be to, um, to put an excerpt from the paper or point out to certain sections and then put, up, uh, put our comments. A peer reviewer probably should not be ambivalent towards his or her uh, recommendation towards the paper and uh, should bring out his or her recommendation very clearly uh, in the discourse of the review or probably as uh, comments to the area chair or the editor. And uh, probably we should uh, avoid uh, contradictory or vague or superficial comments uh, in, in our reviews. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, so yeah, uh, peer reviews are usually uh, anonymous. Although now there are different models where uh, there are provisions 
that people are disclosing uh, their names uh, with the reviews, but uh, most of the peer reviews are anonymous and then confidentiality uh, of the peer reviews should not uh, be, or uh, anonymity should not be used as an excuse uh, to, 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 to write uh, a, a super negative review or uh, deploy a tone uh, that uh, um, we would not probably uh, uh, use while we, while we uh, meet the authors face to face. And um, so, yeah, uh, this is uh, something that Dan uh, Milzer from UC Davis uh, mentioned in one of his presentations. Uh, okay, so uh, the next part of the presentation, uh, I would focus on uh, writing a peer review and the character and the uh, and the and the potential uh, areas we should focus upon. So yeah, uh, before accept, ac accepting our reviewing invitation. Uh, we should be sure about our knowledge uh, about the paper. Usually we receive the title and abstract of the paper uh, or sometimes even the entire paper uh, in PDF. So we should be uh, totally true to ourselves that if we are an expert on the subject before uh, accepting uh, the particular invitation. Also, we should be super sure about our bandwidth that if we have the sufficient uh, time uh, to do justice to that review, because uh, obviously this is a voluntary job and uh, and uh, we have loads of other uh, tasks to do as part of our daily job, but uh, it is also uh, something uh, that uh, the authors may have spent years or months uh, to write their experiments, to perform their experiments. So uh, we should, um, we should, uh, uh, if, we, if, we, if we accept a reviewing invitation, we should do proper justice to that paper to critically uh, review it. And uh, at, the, at, the, at the same time, uh, before accept, accepting a reviewing invitation, we should uh, probably, if, if, if it is not a double blind one, uh, or if, if, if it's a single blind one, and if we can identify the authors uh, in the paper, and if we should identify that if there is a conflict of interest of us uh, with the authors, uh, if, if they are our colleagues and if, if, if they are someone we know closely, so inherently there might be some bias that may creep in in our review. So probably we should uh, refrain uh, and immediately inform the editor or chair uh, to that uh, probably we can't uh, review that paper because of having conflict of interest. So yes, uh, uh, there might be many suggestions. I have uh, summarized a few of them, which I find beneficial for me. Uh, so uh, probably like how do one uh, write a good review? So first is that uh, read and reread the paper. And uh, if uh, so, so usually we will have some very initial thoughts on the paper, some very initial strong reactions on the paper but uh, we should give time to settle it down and then uh, reread the paper and uh, justify our thoughts and probably then write letter write a coherent and uh, constructive review uh, so while starting uh, while we start to uh, write uh, the review uh, first uh, probably we should uh, summarize the main findings of the paper of the article based on our own understanding uh, what we have understood. Uh, it, it, it might so happen that uh, we have uh, understood it uh, grossly wrong, but uh, it should not, it probably should not be uh, like copy pasting uh, something from the abstract. So uh, our uh, summary should reflect our understanding of the paper and that understanding should also probably help the editors or uh, chairs to make a decision. The next point could be to uh, list down the merits or strengths of the paper, which uh, pertaining to several aspects. Uh, so I am from NLP and uh, there are certain aspects we follow in our community. For example, we would want to comment on the originality or the novelty of the work, uh, which probably is same for other domains. Uh, also the substance or the volume of the work that has been put into uh, probably the clarity uh, of writing, the presentation and formatting. And also at the same time, we should also judge that whether uh, this uh, particular paper or article is appropriate uh, to 
the scope of the journal or the uh, or the or, or the venue for which we are re reviewing so um, firstly we probably we should list down the merits of the paper and uh, we accurately specify the best aspects that are there in the paper the major uh, crux of the review lies in identifying the critics identifying the weaknesses or or providing critics to uh, certain uh, certain aspects of the paper and where uh, where in our problem starts so uh, probably we should highlight the shortcomings uh, in the in a in a in an argumentative fashion but we should be uh, super collegial in our tone and our arguments as i mentioned earlier should be backed by proper evidence from the paper as well as literature so that uh, they sound convincing uh, rather than uh, probably ranting or venting our uh, negative opinions on the paper. Uh, so uh, it, it, it makes sense to make it in a point-wise fashion. And also while we do that, probably uh, one aspect that we should uh, feed forward the author with our thoughts or how to uh, mitigate uh, the weaknesses that are there in the paper, which uh, we uh, as reviewers may have identified. So yeah, help the authors with clear action points and feedback. Also, uh, we would want to group, uh, we may want to group the minor comments, which usually uh, pertains to grammatical inconsistencies, typos, uh, language errors, or presentation and formatting uh, with line numbers, which uh, could be easily fixed by the author with a minimal uh, effort. So we can group those uh, points into minor comments so that uh, the, the, the authors uh, have a better understanding that uh, which are the crucial part and which are the uh, minor uh, part uh, and which are easily uh, fixable, I would say. Uh, certain venues also allow the peer reviewers to engage uh, with the other uh, reviewers for the same paper uh, it's a good practice to do so that uh, so that uh, we it, it, it could help us to clarify some of our own misconceptions but at the same time there is a caveat that uh, if there is a reviewer and we know the identity of the reviewer and if that uh, reviewer is um, is super famous in the community, uh, probably uh, that might overshadow or reinforce uh, their beliefs or thoughts about the paper on, on us. So we should probably try to uh, prevent that. But uh, definitely if, if it is something very logical and that, uh, that, uh, that perturbs our misconception, uh, those are welcome. So, uh, and also like sometimes we would also want to take help of sub reviewers in confidence of the paper so that uh, the uh, uh, so that uh, our own misconceptions are probably uh, difficulty in timings could be uh, mitigated while we engage with our sub reviewers. Yes, uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we discussed this earlier as well, like we should not be probably ambivalent in our comments and we should write with conviction what we believe about the paper because that would eventually help the editors or chairs to make a decision. And uh, if required, uh, if if required, uh, and if there is a provision, we may also write uh, confidential comments to the editors and the chairs, uh, which should be some decisive comments regarding the fate of the paper, uh, be it a journal or a conference. So yes, we should be uh, super careful about our language and grammar that we are putting into our reviews. Uh, Obviously, we can take a help of language services or also uh, or maybe ask our colleagues to uh, see the review before we post it because our, uh, our review, which is not uh, probably consistent in terms of language and grammar, may not be perceived well uh, by the authors, even if there are some important points. Uh, okay, so uh, these are all my thoughts, which are uh, heavily borrowed from my uh, colleagues, uh, uh, and uh, moving on to the next part of this uh, of this presentation, uh, which is also like when once we receive the reviews, uh, we should um, we should we should also uh, respond to the reviews if there are uh, if there are options to do so uh, because in sometimes in conferences there are uh, no rebuttal periods but. 
in case of uh, journals definitely we can engage in a collaborative uh, discussion uh, with the reviewers uh, as as authors and also respond to them after taking actions on the comments that they have specified so uh, yeah so probably for the sake of time i would start uh, the second part of this uh, presentation and after that uh, we can uh, we can discuss uh, and we can I, 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 we can take questions yeah so yes, uh, responding to the reviewers could be a frustrating and daunting task, and uh, we all uh, and special and specifically, uh, I'm talking about uh, reviews which are negative, uh, uh, which criticizes our work, and we need to defend us. So uh, yeah, so as we uh, we all love our research, we are all positive uh, uh, about our work we do, but. We should also be open to criticisms to improve ourselves, and that's how uh, research or uh, probably science progresses. So uh, we should we should uh, keep our cool after we probably re have received a negative review and think logically on the to dos. So one thing um, that helps uh, me personally is to uh, group the comments into these uh, three categories. One is uh, the major comment, which are the comments that might not be uh, fixed very quickly and it would require thoughts uh, to uh, take actions or response. Uh, some are minor comments, which would be very helpful if the reviewers group the minor comments in the section. And probably some comments uh, we should ignore because uh, they might not be uh, fixed uh, or probably that is beyond the scope of uh, fixing. So measure minor and ignore. And uh, probably we should try to address the major comments first. So how do we craft uh, the response? So we have to understand that uh, we are writing uh, the rebuttals or the response for two different audience. One audience is the reviewer who have uh, you know, read our, our paper uh, to varying degrees. And, uh, uh, and they might have, uh, they might have, um, they might have uh, highlighted something which uh, we don't agree, or uh, they might have highlighted something which, which they didn't understand. So we have to clarify those things to them. But at the same time, uh, we should also write rebuttals keeping in mind the editor or the chair who is going to take the decision based on our response. So often uh, point two is ignored and uh, we specifically focus on point one, but I guess point two is also very important uh, because uh, they are the ones, uh, the, the senior people who are going to uh, finally take the de decision. So yeah, addressing the two audience uh, in, the, in our reviews are, are important. So um, uh, the goals uh, to respond to the reviewers would be to clarify their doubts, answer their questions, or um, correct their mis misunderstandings, uh, and uh, probably also like, uh, if if some suggestions or action points have been made, so uh, if if some feedbacks has been given by the reviewers, uh, we can put some additional information uh, in order to uh, say that uh, we have addressed those. So for the uh, for the chairs and the editors, probably we have to convince them that uh, we have a good full faith in the effort that the chairs and the reviewers have put in. Uh, also. Um, it, it would be helpful to, to put a representative summary, like highlighting the common points where the reviewers uh, agree or the points where the reviewer uh, disagrees with each other and help them understand that uh, we have uh, addressed most of the con con concerns or probably some concerns which we can't address and help them to make a decision. So the in general steps, it could be that first we itemize the, uh, the the comments that we receive from the reviewer and draft our write the uh, our brain dump the possible responses uh, it, it it might be very or super messy uh, but uh, dump everything that uh, we would want to respond but then uh, when uh, it, it it is settled out uh, probably then we should start uh, writing the draft rebuttal and then before uh, submitting, we should uh, review and uh, revise it uh, th thoroughly. So, yeah, 
while we uh, write the response, we should be uh, super polite because uh, it is not only us who have put effort on the uh, paper, it is also the reviewers who have uh, put efforts or their voluntary time to review or evaluate our work. So um, we should uh, initiate, we should probably begin with thanking the reviewers for their uh, advice or apologize for some information which were uh, not there in the paper. So uh, we should make it clear to the uh, reviewers that we value their input. Uh, although at some, uh, although we may disagree with some of their comments, which we uh, which would which we would later signify uh, in the in in the discourse of the rebuttal. And uh, we should be uh, concise probably because uh, in terms of conference reviews. Uh, if I if I talk about our our uh, ACL and NLP community, we have fixed uh, uh, fixed uh, length of words by by which we have to uh, commit our rebuttal. Uh, so, uh, but it may transcend to other domains as as well. So, instead of putting um, uh, too much of explanation uh, or, or 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 reiterating explanations. Uh, uh, probably it makes sense to be concise and uh, not everything we need to uh, respond because there might be some comments which the reviewer thoroughly misunderstood and probably which are uh, non respondable so we may want to skip those. Uh, but definitely we would want to uh, address the major points uh, that are uh, that are made by the by the reviewer and and, and if there is a major point which is uh, which is not addressable probably we should address that point to the uh, as a confidential remarks to the uh, chairs or the uh, editors that uh, this is where the reviewer has grossly misunderstood our work so um, uh, yeah definitely we should focus on the most important comments uh, like if we if our uh, um, reviewer has all of them has given uniformly good comments but uh, uh, it is likely uh, that the paper will get accepted, but uh, it is not guaranteed, right? Because um, many a times there are some other factors which also plays uh, while a paper is getting uh, accepted or rejected in some super competitive uh, venues, like uh, I can say about the computer vision or NLP, where the conference chairs strive to uh, strive to keep the acceptance rate within some percentage. Uh, in order to uh, keep the prestige or the competitiveness of the conference going. So uh, it might happen that you receive all three uh, uh, positive reviews and yet your paper is not accepted because there were probably better papers than, than, than yours. Uh, so uh, it, it happened to me uh, several times. So this is one caveat, but um, we should not forget to politely thank the reviewers and answer their uh, questions and uh, try not to say anything that may, that they might reduce their score. Probably this is not super important for uh, the journal uh, reviewers, uh, where uh, if there are uh, all positive comments, the uh, uh, the paper should get probably accepted. But uh, in terms of these competitive venues in conferences, this uh, this happens. And yeah, so if it is a borderline that uh, you have at least one accept or a borderline, it is mostly important to try to respond to the concerns of the people who give uh, you a borderline or a reject uh, review because um, given the space constraints or uh, probably we should uh, take more attention, spend our more energy into um, responding to the reviewers who have uh, criticized our work. So yeah, uh, we focus on those comments. So uh, yeah, so now if, if everything is below the borderline, uh, the author's response might not help uh, here. And but then if there is some very glaring mistakes that the reviewers had made in their understanding of the paper, we should definitely rebut and also uh, report to the editor or the or, or the corresponding chair. So yes, uh, once uh, we, we have received uh, the review, uh, we should um, read the review and then vent. Uh, if, if it is uh, strongly negative, we vent our anger and uh, probably let a day pass and then uh, revisit the review again when things are settled or stabilized. And uh, then we follow the previous steps to summarize the main comments 
uh, aggregate the comments via, via multiple reviewers and uh, then probably group them into a major, minor, and ignore, and then go ahead with uh, uh, with responding to them. And if there are some to dos or action points like further experiments or further uh, uh, further information, which would probably come under major uh, comments, uh, we should strive to uh, act towards that. So a uh, few tips from uh, Devi Parikh, uh, who is uh, a professor at uh, Georgia Tech and also a scientist at, at Facebook AI. And uh, I regularly read her blogs and I borrow these things from these certain tips from her. So it makes sense to uh, start positive while responding. And as we say that, uh, uh, as we would expect our reviewers to be constructive. So. Uh, while response, we should be also uh, super polite and uh, and uh, do not write something which should uh, which may uh, offend our, our our reviewers. So uh, ordering matters. Like uh, it's it's probably a best practice to come in order uh, of their concerns and respond likewise. Uh, then uh, we might let the reviewers speak from themselves and then respond them directly. For example, uh, whatever comments they have made, we code them and then provide the response so that um, it seems that uh, we have paid due attention to their reviews or, or we, have, we might not have mixed, uh, we might not have mixed comments from several reviewers. And uh, it could also benefit that if we uh, be in a conversational tone with the reviewer so that it may spark some discussion uh, probably not so much relevant for conferences, but for journals, uh, if we want to rebut them uh, uh, as, uh, with, uh, we, uh, since we, we want them to uh, uh, give an argumentative review. So probably uh, while we would rebut them, we would also want to uh, back our um, rebuttals with evidences from inside the paper or maybe uh, from the literature itself. So we could uh, also choose to respond to the intent of the questions. The questions. Uh, we would want to understand in what intent the reviewer had uh, written the question. And uh, uh, if we want to emphasize something, uh, capitalization or making it bold or color coding, uh, our responses might help so that uh, it saves uh, the reviewers uh, time to see uh, what response we have made to their comments. Uh, yeah, so uh, so we should feel free to uh, set uh, the stage for further conversations, as we already uh, mentioned, uh, so that we can enter into a dialogue with the reviewers. Uh, we can also try to make things self-contained. So for example, if there are some abbreviations, we should uh, probably expand it uh, so that the reviewer might not, uh, might not uh, have to refer uh, externally to understand the abbreviation, or uh, probably we should uh, also input uh, the line numbers in the reviews or from the papers while we make reference to the papers or the reviews. Uh, and uh, many a times it so happens that uh, the reviewers point out something which are already present uh, on the, in the paper. So uh, we might want to uh, point the reviewer towards that direction using the page number or line number and say that, um, and uh, why, while thanking him, him or her, uh, we can say that this this was the thing that was already there in the paper, and probably uh, the reviewer might have uh, uh, missed it. The next item would be to be uh, probably consolidate the common concerns by the various reviewers. It uh, it makes sense for uh, the conference peer reviewing style where uh, we have limited space uh, to rebut uh, to the reviewers. So. Uh, probably like grouping R1, R2, R3, and uh, addressing their common concerns in one go makes sense to save space. Uh, and yeah, we can we can color code the re reviewers uh, so that they understand to, to whom we have responded. Uh, and yes, uh, stats speak louder than words. So if we have some uh, stats or numbers to back up our, our, our evidences to back our uh, rebutting claims, uh, it would be much more beneficial rather than uh, stating uh, st or rather than just writing text for those. Uh, 
also uh, it, it, it's it's a common thing that when there are some uh, deficits uh, in the paper which we probably do agree uh, we write uh, like we will do this in the camera ready version we will include these we will include uh, we'll include this concern. So uh, these are often uh, okay, but uh, sometimes may not be taken well because um, that highlights that there are, uh, that the author has already agreed that there are too many deficits in the paper. So probably it might make sense that uh, um, to to uh, do some additional work uh, in the in the in the meantime uh, in in the time by by of which we have to respond to the reviewers. And then back uh, back our comments with the uh, additional work or evidences that we have. So yeah, we should be receptive and uh, reasonable uh, while responding, and we not uh, may not let our emotions uh, creep in into our reviews. Uh, although it, it, it is super difficult to do that, but uh, we have to do it in a very professional manner. Uh, and uh, uh, as uh, as Devi suggests, we should be transparent enough. And if there is something uh, if there is something wrong, which has been rightly uh, pointed out by the reviewer, we should uh, be transparent and accept it. Uh, also, yeah, uh, we know that there are problems in the in the reviewing system, and if the reviewer has not done his job uh, correctly or probably probably uh, have put some toxic uh, comments to the authors which uh, we won't agree uh, we should we should definitely uh, write back uh, uh, maybe not uh, directly in the review uh, or maybe we should uh, report it back to the chairs or the editors that uh, this was not in a professional uh, fashion uh, this comment was not made in a professional fashion yeah and uh, we should acknowledge the reviewer efforts like we should thank them uh, in conclu in conclusion as well as in the in the beginning because yeah, this is uh, something the reviewer has done voluntarily out of his work, uh, um, uh, apart from his uh, daily work. So we should acknowledge their time. And uh, yeah, we should definitely not forget that there, there is a human at the other end who would be reading our responses. So if we feel bad about uh, their, uh, their reviews or their uh, criticisms, it might so happen that uh, any harsh uh, rebuttals may, might also affect them. So. Uh, we should not yeah we should keep this thing into consider consideration so yeah uh, final comments uh, this is probably um, something we all desire that uh, as authors uh, we should feel that the reviewer has spent enough time on uh, on our paper and honored our uh, labor irrespective of the recommendation be it and uh, be it towards acceptance or rejection the author should also honor the time of the reviewer uh, they have spent uh, on evaluating their uh, manuscript and respond uh, to their comments uh, politely. And overall, uh, I feel that uh, this process of peer review, which takes our research or science forward, which, which is an enormous community effort consisting of authors, reviewers, editors, uh, should be in a very feel good and respectful environment and uh, that might uh, foster uh, belief uh, uh, belief or uh, increase the truth value of uh, this system uh, which is so closely uh, knitted in our in our research so yeah so yeah with as reviewers uh, we have huge power but at the same time uh, it comes with huge responsibility to do so uh, to write a good review and uh, if we receive a review to also respond it correctly. Uh, yeah, but uh, writing review is a very important job for all of us uh, in order to shape the community. And uh, since uh, we have that power to do so, uh, we should responsibly do it probably. And yeah, so uh, thank you so much uh, for, uh, for providing me this opportunity to uh, talk with you all and I would uh, like to take questions now. Uh, yes. Dr. Gocha, we have some questions from the audience. Mm -hmm. The first one is, uh, sometimes the language in the paper is very poor, but it has a measurable contribution. In conference papers, there is no way to verify whether the English has been improved in the camera ready version. 
what should be a reviewer's decision in this case? Uh, this is probably a very good good question uh, about the language of the paper. And uh, I think that if there are uh, comments uh, on the language of the pay of the paper, uh, and if if those are severe comments that might affect the uh, decision on the paper, the chairs or the editors should step in uh, in this case. And because uh, this uh, like uh, language or the grammatical things, probably we should try to uh, minimize those. But being a non-native English speaker. Uh, it, it 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 is quite natural that that it 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 might happen with our papers with our uh, paper. So uh, I don't feel that this should be a clue for rejection and uh, the reviewers and the editors and the chair should definitely step in because these are all uh, can be fixed uh, uh, not only in the camera D but also uh, while the paper comes uh, while while the paper is sent back to the reviewer before uh, to the author before publishing. So we can. There are also professional uh, editing or English services which which we can um, uh, take help of, or from our peers, from our colleagues to uh, fix our languages. But this should not be never be uh, a, a ground for uh, criticizing one's work. Thank you. Uh, that's another question. Uh, what is your view on conferences not allowing rebuttal, and also when significant rejection? Factors are embedded that principle can sometimes disappoint an early researcher. Uh, yeah. So yes, there are. I agree that there are some. There are many conferences. I would say that don't entertain uh, rebuttals. Uh, probably the reason being the dearth of the reviewer pool and also in the strict time frame that the conferences operate. Uh, so. Uh, yes, uh, there is no way out if uh, if uh, if if we don't agree uh, with the uh, with the concerns of the of the reviewers. Maybe we we can try uh, writing to the chairs that we don't agree with the reviews, but uh, probably it won't. Uh, majority of the times, it won't affect the decision. So, but at the same time, the good thing is that there are so many conferences now and so many venues out there. So. Uh, probably choosing a uh, next venue and working on the comments, uh, which we can demarcate as that, uh, okay, these are these comments we should not ignore. Uh, and some comments which we should, uh, like, which we can ignore should be definitely ignored. And we can try for the next venue because, uh, yes, uh, there are so many conferences for each domain, be it NLP, be it other, others. So, um, yeah, there are there are opportunities, and uh, as and uh, if there is a good work, uh, it it would eventually be published, uh, even if it if it takes long. So, and also also at the same time, I would feel that uh, uh, appropriately choosing a venue is a very important task, which sometimes we we forget. Uh, probably for the early career researchers, that uh, some venue may have very overlapping uh, scope, but there are subtle differences. Uh, we, in, in which the conference might, might focus. So, um, yes, choosing a venue uh, is very important. Uh, I can give one example, like uh, information retrieval and natural language processing are very closely related uh, domains, but uh, we can see that there are uh, papers on retrieval in NLP conferences or papers on NLP uh, for retrieval conferences, but uh, there is also a, a subtle, subtle differences between retrieval and language processing. So uh, we need to clearly understand and do in which uh, area uh, our research caters to and uh, choose our venue appropriately. Yes. Uh, a third question from the audience. Uh, at which point a research scholar assistant can transition themselves into a reviewer? Okay, this is probably a bit uh, tricky question. Uh, uh, and this is very interesting as well, because uh, I remember I started reviewing, uh, probably ghost reviewing for my uh, advisor, but definitely like uh, uh, once I have uh, written that review and uh, he discussed with me and then uh, we, we jointly submitted that. But uh, I would say that um, 
if 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 the if the candidate who is who is probably doing phd uh, has passed his literature survey stage which usually uh, comes after two or two and half years as per indian standards i must say uh, that might be a time uh, to start reviewing but one should be super careful and as as i mentioned that if someone doesn't have that appropriate knowledge or appropriate bandwidth one should not accept uh, the invitation but yeah if we, if we if we if we can talk about a timeline it should be late in the in the career of the phd student thank you uh, the last question from the audience what is the open review initiative can you elaborate a bit more oh yes yes absolutely so uh, open review initiative uh, is uh, is I, i won't say is a recent concept it has been there for some time but uh, now it has it is getting uh, widely adopted by the nlp uh, by the natural language processing uh, machine learning uh, communities where uh, where uh, there is a platform called open review uh, but there might be other problems for open uh, platforms for open reviewing where you can post your uh, you can submit your paper and uh, then uh, your paper uh, can receive uh, comments uh, like comments from the uh, audience uh, or to the uh, from from the general audience it, it 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 is not restricted to only the officially appointed reviewers for example uh, someone buys a product in amazon and everyone is free to write uh, the reviews about that product on amazon uh, probably we should not compare that with product reviews uh, because this is uh, this is scientific uh, uh, research but uh, it operates uh, in in the same way and uh, so who are who are registered in that platform uh, um, it is open to all the reviews are open to all and even the authors are uh, open to rebut them to respond to the comments made by the general audience and uh, after that time frame uh, there there is a certain time frame to do that and after that time frame uh, there uh, there would be some officially appointed uh, reviewers uh, for that particular paper the appointed reviewers would have again a specific time frame where they would uh, go through the paper uh from their own uh, ideas but also look at the various to and fro comments that happened between the audience and the uh audience and the and the authors and they might take their uh interactions into their consideration while they form their own opinion or while they make their own recommendation so then the officially appointed reviewers write their reviews while considering the uh, to and fro comments between the authors and the general audience and uh, within that time frame the um, the author has also the opportunity to respond to the reviewers and engage in a discussion with the reviewers and when the time frame ends for that phase uh, the area chairs uh, steps in and the area chairs or the editors uh, would probably take into consideration the uh, to and fro communication between the uh, authors and the officially appointed reviewers and uh, they would uh, finally write the meta review and uh, give the decision so uh, this is how uh, the open review at least for iclr works uh, the acl is starting is adopting uh, the open uh, review via the acl rolling reviews for, for first time uh, this year uh, that means the nlp community is trying to embrace this open reviewing and it is still at a very experimental stage and we have to wait uh for uh, next year that how is it going in the nlp community thank you sir so uh, it has been a very insightful time really an interesting session and thank you dr gushal for the session and uh, with that uh, the session peer review comes to an end and again we would like to extend our gratitude to dr gushal for accepting our invitation and uh, presenting this valuable insightful session and up next we have the panel discussion on phd phd journey at 1 pm so we invite you all to join with that as well until then stay tuned with us uh, have a nice day